Hello, hi. Uh, as introduced, my name is Alana. I am a deep tech entrepreneur and CEO of Oxford Quantum Circuits. We build quantum computers and we do see quantum as a key to a brighter future for all. It's really our mission to put quantum in the hands of humanity to solve some of the world's most complex problems. Uh, today, we do have the UK's most advanced and only commercially available quantum computer. And I'm going to share with you today how to build a quantum computer together um, in five very simple steps. So first of all, we need some quantum knowledge. Now, actually, I noticed in one of the videos earlier that Amit did a fantastic job of covering some of this, but we'll get up to speed quickly together with some of those fundamental concepts of quantum mechanics. So, well, what is quantum mechanics? Um, well, quantum mechanics, it uh, really does uh, solve, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the slides and just wondering if it has changed. Give me one second. There we go. What is quantum mechanics? Well, uh, quantum mechanics describes the quantum world, um, which is present at nature at its very smallest of scales. It predicts the world that it's at, at it is at its most intimate and fundamental level, which are atoms and photons. And it tells us that those are actually random and incredibly uncertain. Uh, the quantum world is actually a little bit mind-boggling in many ways that will contradict our everyday type of experiences. Um, take a game of pool, for example. In our world, our classical world, we can easily predict the motion of a ball across a pool table. We know that if we knock it and roll it along that table in a really straightforward way, we can easily predict the way um, in which it moves, um, or maybe less so uh, if I'm playing. Um, but in a quantum world, if you push that billiard ball across the, the, across the table, um, it's liable to disappear through the green felt table at absolutely any moment. Um, and that would certainly make games a little bit more interesting, um, but starts to give an example of uh, the quantum behavior um, if it were playing in our real world. So despite all of this random and uncertain behavior, the maths actually, which was developed uh, in the 30s, works really, really well. Uh, the understanding and control uh, that um, we take for granted today um, is developed by this maths. Um, so lasers, transistors, all of this stuff um, is underpinned by this type of maths and has drastically changed our lives. Um, by the 80s, we were measuring and controlling atoms and photons on an individual level, and this presented even more opportunities um, known as the second quantum revolution. Um, and it was really at this time that the idea of quantum computation was first developed by Feynman. Now, quantum computing is basically based off three key principles. Uh, the first of these principles is quantum, the fact that any now type of energy level is discrete. So we're no longer just working in wave functions and um, waveforms, we're working in discrete energy levels. Uh, so that's the first key principle. Um, the second is that of superposition. So this is really starting to move away from having um, two energy levels, a one that's a zero and one that's a one, um, and starting instead to move to a place where you can have a mixture of these two things. So we can think of that like a coin, um, if you have a head or a tail, um, and if you start to spin that coin, it's both a head and a tail at the same time, and until you measure it and stop the coin, you don't necessarily know um, what it's going to land on, and we say whilst it's spinning, it would be in superposition. Um, the third here is entanglement. Um, so this would mean that there is a dependency. So if I now start to spin two coins at the same time, the result of one coin would be dependent on the result of the other. Now, this doesn't mean that we can now start to um, teleport things or information in crazy ways. You do need to start to gather statistics and send information from one place to the other still. But it's an incredibly powerful concept. Um, and those are the three key principles um, that we basically start to build quantum bits from today. So we can build qubits um, with, with these three principles. And, and this is here a depiction of the block sphere. Um, and this is basically our, classic, our quantum analog of the classical bit. Um, and instead, as you can see, of having either a north or a south pole and the one or the zero, instead, we can also sit anywhere on the edge 
of the earth. And here we call that the superposition of the components of either the zero or the one. And you can start to describe that with a lot of the maths that we spoke about um, earlier. Now, having this block sphere, this theoretical qubit, um, opens up many, many computational opportunities um, and states. So that's the first introduction to, um, to the fundamentals. Um, the next is the technology. So next, to build our quantum computer in our five simple steps, we have to pick our qubit. There are actually quite a number of ways to build qubits, as I think has been referenced um, before. You know, psi quantum there, for example, is, is one approach um, built off photonics. So you have, um, now you've understood that basic theory, there's, there's many different ways to start to um, apply it. We can start to apply it with, for example, um, ions and trapped ions. We could build it with NV centers. We could build it with um, photons or silicon spins. Um, or we could build them with superconducting circuits, which is the technology that Oxford quantum circuits, um, unsurprisingly, is based off. Now, superconducting circuits um, are incredibly highly engineerable ways of building quantum bits. Um, so what we basically have are electronic circuits that are built from superconducting metals, as the name um, suggests. Once we begin to cool them down, uh, we then end up with this discrete energy level. Once we cool them down even further so that we're operating around kind of 30 millikelvin in terms of temperatures or minus 265 degrees, much, much colder than space, at that point in time, you then um, have quantum, um, which you can start to manipulate and start to process information with. So those are the, your second stage. You can start to pick your technology of choice. Now, no matter what type of technology that you pick, in order to build a minimal viable product of a useful quantum computer, there are these key three things that we need to start thinking about. Um, they are scale, so number of qubits, and also the scale of the system that we need to build to house and control those qubits. Uh, the next is quality. So we need to every single one of those qubits to be of incredibly high quality, um, very low error rate. Uh, there's a ton of underlying technical parameters to do with this from high coherence times to incredibly low crosstalk um, and a ton more. The third is functionality. Uh, so sounds stupid, but we need to be able to control and manipulate each of the qubits um, individually and turn those interactions on and off. And to function them, we need a ton of additional infrastructure that is at scale and also of a high quality. And ultimately that will determine our overall system performance. Now, uh, this was spoken about in terms of the NISC era. So right now, to get to a minimal viable product, which is sort of where the industry is starting to head towards, we're moving from that simulatable region um, into this NISC region. Uh, we start to think about seeing applications that are really not simulatable and, and commercially impactful in around three to five years, moving then towards this fault tolerant regime um, in more like five, 10 to potentially even 15. I mean, at this point, it's uh, exponentially better and better and better and better. And, and, and that's when we will move towards universal um, quantum computing. And for that, we need more qubits, so scale and lower error rates, so higher quality. Alrighty, that is just the qubits. <laughs> so, so far we've just spoken about the quantum devices or the quantum processes, we call them, um, at the bottom um, there. But to build a quantum computer, we need to build a system. Uh, so there's a ton of additional support architecture and infrastructure that's required to build a quantum system. This goes all the way from compilers uh, through quantum control software, as well as quantum control hardware, making up a lot of the FPGAs, um, RF engineers, all of this different type of stuff. So we need to have full control of an entire system. Okay, so that's the technology sorted. Next up, what else do we need? Well, it's really important that we are not gonna be able to do this on our own. Um, we need a network of trusted partners and collaborators um, so that we can do this and build this together. The good news is, is that this is an incredibly friendly, rapidly evolving ecosystem and industry. Um, and there are a ton of people who are super smart, super friendly, um, and they're always excited to get involved and see how we can work together. So the next thing you need, point three, is a network. What else do we need? Point four. Come on, there we go. Next, the secret to success. Okay, I'm going to share my biggest secret here and 
my legal counsel better get ready. Um, but the next thing that we need is an elite team. We could have the most incredible world-class technology in the world, but absolutely none of this would be possible without an incredible team of world-class technical, commercial and industrial experts. And in order to do that, you know, we need both world-class technology, but we also need to build a world-class company. Uh, today at OQC, we're a team of around 26 people, but we are growing week by week. We can to attract the talent. Um, and there is plenty of opportunities for you to join um, our elite team today. We have 12 roles live on our website, from FPGA roles, RFs, and RF engineer roles, software engineer roles, um, all the way to um, executive assistants and office assistants. And if you're interested, we would love to hear from you. Okay, so that is pretty much it, but <laughs> there is one more thing that we've all alluded to. We need some money. We need a ton of money to build a quantum computer, particularly the hardware space. It is incredibly capital intensive. Um, so it is gonna take pretty much a ton of cash um, to get there. We're seeing raises of hundreds of millions um, now in the space um, and money is coming from both government as well as VC and private capital. So if anybody has got a few million pounds spare change, we'd also really like to hear from you. Um, Right, so that together is basically how you build a quantum computer, or it's certainly how I at OQC have helped build the UK's most advanced quantum computer and the only one that is available in the country. So thank you. We see a brighter future for all that is enabled by quantum. I would encourage you to be a part of this quantum future and to get involved, however, um, suits you best, whether that's as an end user, whether that's a new skill into an upskilling with quantum um, into the industry, um, either at the software space or at the hardware space. It is an incredibly exciting place to be. We are just starting the journey. There is um, still a ton more to come. Um, so you'll be getting in early and um, you'll be a highly lucrative um, resource or, or um, it's a highly lucrative space um, to be working in. So with that, I will close and thank you.